people, let's talk about how you can avoid the most common technique mistakes that piano players are making. And even if you've been playing for a few years, or even if you think that your technique game is on point, I want you to stay tuned to the end of the video because 99% of adult piano players that I encounter are making at least one of these mistakes. These mistakes are most often not a conscious thing. They are things that piano players are unconsciously doing that are preventing them from being able to play with musicality and freedom and flow. Now these mistakes also cause tension and could potentially lead to injury. So I'm going to go through each mistake and I'm going to give you a couple of tips and ideas on how you can fix this mistake if you're making it. The first technique mistake that most piano players are making is not setting yourself up for success. Proper piano technique is actually about the entire body. And proper technique, when utilized correctly, is about being able to use your body in a way that gets the desired sound out of the piano. When you have proper technique, everything falls into place and you'll find that you have a lot of freedom and fluidity in your playing. You'll find that the, the keyboard responds to the way that you play and you have a higher level of control over dynamics and articulation and just the overall musicality and feel of the piece. So if you're not using an adjustable piano bench or if you haven't checked in with your height or your setup lately, make sure that you pay extra attention in this step. Most piano players are sitting too low. I see this time and time again, where people will come to me and they'll say, I don't know why I can't play this passage as fast as I wanna play it. Or for some reason, I've tried everything, but I just can't get this part to sound how I want it to sound. And oftentimes those people are sitting too low. And when you're sitting too low at the piano, what happens is that everything that you try to play, you approach with this awkward angle in your wrist. Because when you're sitting too low, you approach the keys from down here. And all of a sudden, everything is cut off right here. And so really you can only rely on your fingers to do all of the work. When you rely only on your fingers to do the work, you're not going to ever really have that speed or fluidity that you would have when you rely on the entire arm. So if you don't have an adjustable bench, you can sit on books, you can sit on pillows, you can do something creative or find a different chair so that you can be sitting at the proper height because that lays the foundation for every single element of technique after this point. Ideally, you're sitting at a height where your elbow makes a 90 degree angle like this. And you don't want to be too high, otherwise you're going to have a little bit more of a straight angle. And you don't want to be too low, otherwise you're going to look like a V right here. So we want that to be making an uppercase L like this. Now, when you are sitting at the proper height, you also want to make sure that you check in distance wise. Most adult piano players are sitting a little too far back or they're even leaning back like this. And again, this kind of puts a wall between you and the piano. It kind of cuts you off right here. And so you can't really use your entire body or your entire arm to get the desired sound out of the piano. I want you to be sitting up nice and tall, like there's a string coming from the top of your head, pulling you to the ceiling, but also take a deep breath and allow yourself to relax. Because generally when I tell people to sit up nice and straight, they instantly tense up and we don't want tension. So you're sitting up nice and tall. And if anything, I want you to err on the side of leaning forward a little bit, almost like you're a cat that's ready to pounce on the keys. This will prevent you from leaning back and cutting yourself off right here. If you have questions about if you are sitting at the proper height or you're not quite sure, make sure that you join the free Facebook community, post a picture of your setup, post a video of you playing and we can check in and give you some feedback. There's a lot of seasoned players in that group that would be happy to give you some feedback on your setup and if you're sitting at the proper height. If you're watching this video close to the day that it's released, on October 10th at 9 a.m. Pacific time, I'm going to be teaching a free workshop that is all about sight reading. If you struggle with sight reading, you are going to want to be there because during this workshop, I'm going to help you discover the hidden benefits of sight reading. I'm going to teach you what it really takes to sight read with freedom and ease. And we're going to unveil the truth about what's holding you back. You can join this workshop for free using the link in the description below. Replays will be available, but for those of you that are attending live, you will get a free bonus at the end of the workshop. Join using that link in the description. And if it's too late and this workshop has already passed, you can join the waitlist for the next sight reading power hour. The second mistake that most piano players are making when it comes to technique is that they don't have the proper hand position. Now, if you don't have point number one of the adjustable bench and sitting at the correct height done, then you're not going to be able to play with the proper hand position. So it's really essential that you have that first part in place before you even think about your hand position. But once you're sitting at the proper height, you want to think about your hand position and you want to make sure that you are not playing with flat 
fingers. Most adults are doing this even if they think they are not. And a great way to check in with yourself about this is to take a video of you playing and to see, are my fingers rounded like this or are they flat like this? You wanna make sure that they are rounded, almost like you're playing on the nail of your finger. And a really great way to check in to see how rounded your fingers are is to actually take both hands and Put your different fingers against your thumbs and make these little O shapes. That is the point of your finger where you should be playing the piano. And a lot of people are actually playing on the pad of their finger like this, and it creates this little dog face. You don't want that. You want to be creating little O's. And so this is the point of your finger where you want to be playing. So very much on the fingertips. And you also want to be playing out on the edge of the keys. A lot of piano players are playing in here because it feels a little more secure because you can feel more with your fingers when you're up in the black keys, but this actually prevents you from playing with speed and it really hinders your ability to play accurately because when you're up in the keys, you're much more likely to fumble over the black keys than when you're on the edge of the keys. You also have a lot more control over your sound when you're on the edge of the keys because you're playing every single note from the same point on the key. And so when it comes to physics, your, your little lever or the hammer that's coming up and striking the string is going to be much more even if you're playing all of the levers at the same point. If you're learning something from this tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with a community of adult piano players that can also benefit from this, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the free content I release every single day. The third technique mistake that most piano players are making is that they have a stiff wrist. Now, when it comes to playing the piano, we want to have a neutral wrist position, and we're always going to be coming back to this neutral wrist position, but we also want flexibility because the second that you stay stiff with your wrist, you're going to get a lot of tension. It'll start in the wrist maybe, and then it'll move up to the elbow, and then it will move up to the shoulders, and it really starts to affect the entire body. And this is where pain comes in. This is where people often get injured is when they start with a really stiff wrist. And so I want you to think about the fact that this is our neutral hand position. We do want to always be returning to this neutral wrist position where our forearm is parallel to the ground, but we also want to have times when we are coming off the keys and our wrist is guiding us up and times when we're dropping into the keys and our wrist is guiding us down. We have all of those motions plus more, and then we return to our neutral position. But most people will read that they need to keep their hand or their wrist in this neutral hand position and they won't ever move from that position. And this really hinders your ability to move around the keys with flexibility. It also really prevents you from like jumping on the piano or finding new hand positions with any sort of grace. It prevents you from properly playing articulations. And so making sure that you are flexible with your wrist, and I like to coordinate this with the breath, so you can breathe in and lift up and breathe out and sink down. And you can even just practice that motion a few times before you start playing to get used to having that flexible and loose wrist so that you don't have tension there. There are several other wrist motions that you'll utilize when playing the piano. Things like a side to side motion when you're doing arpeggios or jumps. There's things like a rotation of the wrist that you would utilize when you're doing Alberti bass or broken chords. And sometimes there's even a hinging motion that you would use if you were jumping from like single note to single note. But again, we're always coming back to that neutral position and flexibility is key. Now this is something that I talk a lot with with members in the Casual to Confident Piano Player program. When we show up in our group classes and I get to see them play, I can tell them within five or 10 seconds how they can make tiny adjustments to their wrist motions, to their posture, to their overall technique that get them those big results. People often think that in order to learn difficult things, you have to make these huge changes in your piano playing or you have to be practicing for hours and hours and hours. And yes, you do need to practice, but oftentimes it's like a very small technical change that will give you those bigger results where all of a sudden you're able to play with a lot more freedom and a lot more musicality because you're utilizing your body in the proper way. And that's something that is just significantly easier and faster to do when we are face to face. So if you're not already on the VIP waitlist for Casual the Confident Piano Player, you can join using the link below. It's free to be on the VIP waitlist. And when enrollment opens, I actually always open it up to the waitlist first and offer special and exclusive bonuses just to the people that are on that waitlist. So make sure you join that waitlist using the link in the description below. And if you want some more information about how you can utilize proper technique, I did a live stream a while ago where I went really deep into piano posture. I went really deep into some of the different kinds of techniques that you utilize when you are rotating at the wrist or when you want that wrist flexibility. And you can check that live stream out right here on the end screen.